We all have a digital shadow, a trail of data we leave across the internet. But what if you could actually see that shadow? What if you could connect all those scattered footprints and map out an entire online identity from just a single clue? That's exactly what we're digging into today. Think about it. Every domain you register, every email you send, every account you create, they're all little breadcrumbs. The real question is, how do you gather all those breadcrumbs and see the story they tell? What secrets are hiding in plain sight? So here's our roadmap. We'll kick things off with why this is such a huge challenge in the first place, the sheer overload of information online. Then we'll meet Spiderfoot, our tool for the job, and see what makes it tick. We'll run a hypothetical scan, I'll walk you through how to install it, and then we'll wrap up with the really important stuff, the power, ethics, and legality of using a tool like this. All right, let's set the stage. Why is a tool like Spiderfoot even necessary? Well, it all comes down to the mind-boggling scale of the internet. Trying to manually piece together someone's digital life is, well, it's like trying to solve a million-piece jigsaw puzzle where the pieces are scattered across the entire planet. You can spend days, weeks, just jumping between search engines, social media sites, and public records. It's slow, it's tedious, and you're almost guaranteed to miss the most important connections. It is the definition of finding a needle in a haystack. And that's exactly where automation changes the game. So let me introduce you to the tool that acts like a super-powered magnet, pulling all those needles right out of the haystack for you. Meet Spiderfoot. It's an OSINT automation tool. Now, OSINT just stands for Open Source Intelligence, and that's basically any information you can find publicly. Instead of you doing the searching, Spiderfoot does it for you, automatically tapping into hundreds of different data sources, pulling all that info together and making sense of it. And the best part? It's totally free and open source. So let's look at the key features. It's written in Python, so it's super flexible. You can use it through a really simple web interface or get your hands dirty with the command line. But here's the crucial part. It's dual use nature. For the red teams, the attackers, it's an incredible reconnaissance tool. And for the blue teams, the defenders, it's an essential way to look at your own company from the outside and see the vulnerabilities an attacker would see first. So how does it actually pull this off? How does it connect all those dots so effectively? The secret sauce is its modular design. The heart of Spiderfoot is a collection of over 200 modules. You can think of each module as a tiny, specialized detective. One knows everything about domain names, another is an expert on data breaches, and a third can track down social media accounts. What's so amazing is that most of these just work right out of the box. No need to go hunting for complicated API keys. Now this is where it gets really, really clever. It's not just 200 separate searches happening at once. Spiderfoot uses what's called a publisher slash subscriber model. When one module finds a new piece of information, like an email address, it publishes it. Then all the other modules that can use an email address subscribe to that new data and launch their own new searches. It creates this incredible chain reaction of discovery. And just look at the range here. You've got threat intelligence modules checking IPs against known bad guy lists. You have data breach modules that'll check services like Have I Been Pwned? Network recon modules can tap into search engines like Shodan, which is kind of like a Google for servers and IoT devices to see what's exposed. And of course, DNS modules to map out the technical backbone of a domain. Each one gives you a totally different piece of the puzzle. Okay, so that's the theory. But what does this chain reaction actually look like? Let's run through a quick hypothetical scan to see how one tiny thread can unravel a whole digital tapestry. You can kick off a scan with almost anything you've got. A domain name, an IP address, an email, a simple username. You can even start with a Bitcoin address. Each one is a potential starting point for the investigation. So for our example, let's keep it simple. We're going to give Spiderfoot just one thing to work with, a domain name. That's it. Let's see what happens. Immediately, the first wave of modules kicks in, mapping out the raw infrastructure. It's finding subdomains, the IP addresses they point to, and pulling raw DNS records like MX records that tell you about their email setup. It'll identify who the hosting provider is, are they on AWS, and port scanners will start checking those IPs for any open doors. But now the real magic begins. All of that infrastructure data becomes food for the next set of modules. The web spider starts crawling the sites it found, scraping out email addresses and people's names. Those names and emails are then automatically fed to the social media modules to find profiles. Other modules identify the web technologies being used, is it a vulnerable version of WordPress? And it even finds things like PDFs and images, pulling out the hidden metadata. See what happened? 
We started with one domain, and now we have a rich map of infrastructure, technology, and the people connected to it. Okay, I'm guessing you've seen enough to be intrigued. So how do you actually get this thing up and running? It's surprisingly easy. First things first, you've got two main choices. You can grab the stable release, which is what I recommend for pretty much everyone just starting out. Or, if you like living on the edge and want the newest, not fully tested features, you can clone the development build right from GitHub. For the stable build on a Linux system, it's just four commands. You'll need Python 3.7 or higher, by the way. First, you use wget to download the package. Second, you unpack it with tar. Third, you cd into the new directory. And last, you use pip3 to install all the Python libraries it needs to run. And this is the final step. You run the sift.py script. That little dash L flag just tells it what IP address and port to listen on. In this case, it's just your local machine on port 5001. Run that command, open up your web browser to that address, and you're looking right at the Spiderfoot dashboard, ready to go. All right, now that you know how to wield this incredibly powerful tool, we have to talk about the most important part of all, the responsibility that comes with it. And let's be crystal clear on this. Spiderfoot, the tool itself, is perfectly legal. It's like a hammer, but it's how you use that hammer that matters. Just because data is publicly accessible doesn't always mean you have the legal right to scrape and collect it for any purpose. Using it without authorization can get you into serious trouble. The responsibility is 100% on you, the user. So what does responsible use look like? Well, defensively, it's about auditing your own company. Find your own weaknesses before a real attacker does. Offensively, it's for authorized work, like a penetration test, where you have a signed contract giving you permission. And for researchers and journalists, it's about using public data to find stories, all while respecting the law. Ultimately, tools like Spiderfoot don't create information. They just reveal the connections that are already there, hiding in plain sight. And that forces us to ask a really fundamental question. In a world where everything is discoverable and everything is connected, what does privacy even mean anymore? And whose job is it to protect it?